It's Friday, April 28th, 2023. Welcome to episode 51 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, the City Council spends time reviewing priorities for a three-year strategic plan. Carica Park's North Course is about to get a major upgrade. The recent discussions on earthquake risk cast a shadow on the proposed veterans facility. Electrification is coming to the ferry fleet and maybe to big rigs in California. And an Alameda author and an Alameda vocalist release new works that you should know about. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story. On April 24th, City Council held its second public workshop on developing a three-year strategic plan. The workshop reviewed a revised draft vision statement, priority areas, and priority projects, which will inform the upcoming budget process. The city's strategic planning consultant, Civic Makers, presented five draft priority areas based on results from the previous strategic plan workshop held in March. The proposed priority areas are enhance community safety and services, invest in transportation and infrastructure, build resilience to climate change and water level rise, house all Alamedans, and practice fiscally responsible and inclusive governance. The council agreed on these areas, with Councilmember Trish Herrera-Spencer asking that the issue of homelessness be spelled out explicitly in number four. During the workshop, a series of projects in each of the five areas were discussed and prioritized. Among the projects, developing an emergency water supply plan, installing red light cameras at certain intersections, the bicycle pedestrian bridge to Jack London Square, improving Civic Center parking garage safety, expanding electric vehicle recharging, the relocation of the Alameda Food Bank, providing shelter and supportive services for the homeless, streamlining the building permit process, just a small sample of the projects that were reviewed. Civic makers and city staff will conduct employee and community engagement events through May to solicit further feedback. By June, the city will finalize its work plans and integrate chosen priorities into the city's budget. In other city business, the planning board reviewed a Carica Park golf course fire tower beautification project. The project is a mural on all sides of the tower and a landscape and fencing plan that creates a gathering space surrounding the tower. The board unanimously accepted the landscaping plan but rejected the mural design as being, quote, too psychedelic, end quote. The board directed Greenway Golf to return with designs that are more conservative and subtle, from which they will choose one. For full details of the meeting, see Karen Jensen's article at alamedapost.com slash news. Speaking of golf, for many, playing on a course designed by Robert Trent Jones Jr. is a highlight. Soon you won't have to travel far to play one. Greenway Golf, the long-term lessee, developer, and manager of the Carica Golf Complex, has announced a collaboration with master architect Robert Trent Jones Jr. and his golf course design company to renovate the north course at Carica Park, including the completion of the back nine holes. This is really keeping it in the family, as it were. Karika's award-winning South Course was designed by Robert's brother, Reese. When the North Course renovations are complete, Karika will be unique, as it will be the only location in the world where brothers will have their names on side-by-side municipal courses. Greenway owners Avani and Umesh Patel commented on their choice of Robert Trent Jones Jr., saying, quote, We are honored to work with this living legend and his talented team to finish the North Course and make Carica Park one of the premier 36-hole public golf course facilities in the country. End quote. On the Robert Trent Jones II website, the Palo Alto-based company had this to say, quote, Construction will begin in June with a goal of delivering a memorable, challenging golf experience for all players that takes a holistic approach to design and sustainability. End quote. For more details on this project, visit alamedapost.com slash news. Recently, a lot of us have been introduced to a word that would really be quite the play in Scrabble, liquefaction. The U.S. Geological Survey defines it as what takes place when loosely packed waterlogged sediments at or near the ground surface lose their strength in response to strong ground shaking. Earlier this month, our own Liz Barrett wrote about what it means for Alameda. Basically, in the event of a major earthquake here on the island, a lot of our land could, as our own Dennis Evanoski puts it, turn to soup. Much of Alameda is built on landfill, and that land is vulnerable. The danger comes from the Hayward Fault Line, which experiences big quakes about every 150 years. The last one was 1868. That's 155 years ago. Now you know why people are talking about the potential impact on Alameda. If you haven't read Liz's article, it's a great overview of the potential problems, as well as a look at some positive steps that are already being taken. You can find that article at alamedapost.com features. So there's definitely existing structures and areas on the island that would be at risk, but what about new construction? 
That's what's on the mind of post-environmental writer Richard Bangert. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is seeking to build a clinic and veterans benefits facility near the former Naval Air Station airfield. The chosen site is already built from reclaimed land, and the new project would require piling more fill on top of the existing. In 1996, the city's community reuse plan for the base explicitly warned against the overuse of fill in new construction due to the potential for earthquake damage. When the VA conducted its environmental assessment over a decade ago, it only looked at the potential for damage from the San Andreas Fault, 12 miles away, and not the Hayward, which is only six. Richard notes that there are two alternate sites at the point that could serve the purposes of the VA without resorting to the need for 10,000 truckloads of fill. One is a 45-acre parcel near the USS Hornet, the other the 30-acre area that once housed the bachelor's enlisted quarters. To get the full picture, including maps and links to the surveys and studies I've mentioned, visit alamedapost.com slash op dash ed. The electrification of California continues. Alameda's Main Street Ferry Terminal is set to become the first to operate zero-emission electric ferries across the bay and the first in the nation to offer service at that distance, thanks to a $13.8 million grant from the California State Transportation Agency. The San Francisco Bay Area Water Emergency Transportation Authority announced the grant Tuesday, April 25th. The grant will fund electric infrastructure and increase charging capacity to the downtown San Francisco Ferry Terminal, Alameda Main Street Ferry Terminal, and WIDA's Central Bay Operations and Maintenance Facility in Alameda. WIDA can't yet provide a date when the new all-electric zero-emission ferry service will begin, according to WIDA's Public Information Office, as it will take a few years to complete the infrastructure and build out the ferries. This is the next step for the San Francisco Ferry, which already operates the nation's cleanest high-speed, high-capacity fleet. In other electrification news, an unprecedented proposal by California's Air Resources Board is drawing a great deal of attention and not all of it positive. The board is proposing ending sales of new diesel-powered big rig trucks by 2036 with a complete conversion of existing fleets by 2042. The state requirements to switch existing truck fleets to zero emissions by 2042 would apply to high-priority fleets, which are owned or operated by companies with 50 or more trucks or $50 million or more in annual revenue, and to federal trucks. Included, all vehicles weighing 8,500 pounds or more, as well as package delivery vehicles for the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, UPS, and Amazon. After a public hearing held yesterday, the board is expected to vote on the proposal today, Friday, April 28th. The California Trucking Association has already stated their opposition. Details on both these electrification stories at alamedapost.com news. Here on the postcast, you know Karen Jensen is the woman who reports on the events of council meetings. Well, she writes a lot more than that. And here at the Alameda Post, we are pleased to announce that she has published The Strength of Water, an Asian American coming of age memoir. The memoir is assembled from stories told to Karen by her mother, Helen, a woman whose journey started in San Francisco and included stops in Detroit, China, and back to the Bay Area. Critics have called the book, quote, a heartening read about an immigrant daughter's odyssey and a must read for anyone interested in the sociology of early 20th century China or the experience of Chinese immigrants, end quote. Karen will be discussing her book at the Alameda Free Library on May 10th and will also have a book signing at Books, Inc. on May 11th. Find Lee Shu Callahan's review at alamedapost.com slash features. While you're there, get to know Alameda-based opera singer Chelsea Hollow and her new album, Cycles of Resistance. The album is a journey through international resistance movements over the last 120 years. Half of the works use electronic instrumentation and half are set for a traditional classical recital of voice and grand piano. Allie and Vine would like to invite you to come by for a meal or even a drink. On Monday, they were the victims of a fairly significant break-in. According to their Instagram feed, they lost a lot, but they appreciate the support the community has shown and would love to see you at 1332 Park Street as they try to recoup their losses. Parents, make some time on Saturday, May 6th, as the Alameda Police Department presents a car seat inspection and installation event from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. AlamedaPost.com slash events, your source for happenings all across the island. Mark your calendars for May 14th and 21st as Christ Episcopal Church presents their second annual community art show, open to the public with proceeds benefiting the Midway Shelter. Altarina Playhouse finishes their run of Ruthless the Musical. Last show is Saturday night. The Food Bank players are gearing up for a bit of an island tour, a double feature of Pyramus and Thisbe along with A Midsummer Night's Dream. First shows are next weekend at the Healing Garden. After that, find them at Franklin Park, Lincoln Park, and Tillman Park. As always, make alamedapost.com slash events your go-to for events across the island. Thank you for supporting local news for Alameda. Join us as a member, alamedapost.com slash memberships. 
Remember, you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Mastodon, as well as our own subreddit. Find the postcast wherever you get your podcasts, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday with a special episode of the Alameda Postcast, focusing on the Alameda Warming Shelter.